Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'm going to be going through 10 Delta Recruit tips and tricks that all of you should be taking advantage of. And starting off at number 10 is the fact that you do not actually have to go in and do all of the Delta Recruit task during the time frame that they show the Delta Recruit event as being active. The time frame that they give for the Delta Recruitment event is simply the time frame in which you can go in and make a character to make it a Delta Recruit. You don't have to do any of the task in that time frame. You can literally just go in, set up a Delta Recruit character, and as soon as you have progressed enough through that character, usually just through the tutorial, to earn this Tesseract Communications Receiver, once you see that in your inventory, you can log off the character and not touch it for half a year. So, that is something that I've seen a few people getting mixed up about, and there's been some people I've seen going out rushing, thinking that they have to get all of these tasks done uh, during this, this event, and that is simply not the case. You just make the character during the event, play through it enough to, to earn this device in your inventory, and once you have that device, it will work any any time of the year you want, Outside of this event, during the other recruitment events, doesn't matter. It will work whenever. You just double click on it and it will show you all of the tasks. You can hover over to see what the rewards would be. And you can go through and complete those whenever. And just to give an example here, I have a Klingon recruit character. And the Klingon recruitment event is not currently live. But because I have that or I have the Klingon version of the, the receiver in my inventory, the encrypted Klingon receiver here, I can still go through and access the, the task and earn the rewards. Um, so just a couple of minutes ago, I went through and I put in 15 spec points and I was able to claim the reward. It took a minute for it to load, but um, it did actually let me claim that. So there, there's some proof to show you that you don't have to rush and do this all in this time frame. Just get the recruit device in your inventory during the event, and that is the only thing you need to do in that time period. And next up at number nine is the fact that there is a benefit to making a Delta recruit character for the Fed side, the Romulan side, and the Klingon side. So. There's a full list of the, the rewards from the Delta Recruitment event over on the STO Wiki, which I'll leave a link to down in the description below. But there is different mission arcs for each of the factions early on, and you can see here, uh, you can see the faction icons here, and you can see that there's quite a few Klingon ones, there's some, some Romulan ones, quite a few Romulan ones. Uh, so if you're looking to maximize the the rewards that you can get from the delta recruit event um which again you can see the full list of over up on the wiki then i would recommend that you go through and make a fed delta recruit a romulan delta recruit and a klingon one while the event is still active and again you don't have to play them right now but you'll have them for for when you want to go in through in the future and get them unlocked and you can see here that it is quite a decent amount of fleet marks and lithium that you're going to be able to claim on every other character on your account by going through and playing those arcs on the various factions there. So definitely take a look at that. And if you want to give yourself something to do in the future, that, that's definitely something worthy to grind. Um, back when this stuff first came out, way back in like 2015 or whatever, I went through and I played... All of the, the arcs that they had for each of the three different factions there to get all the rewards. And for me, with like 50 characters, you know, that that's a massive amount of Dilithium, massive amount of fleet marks that I was able to get on every character on my account by going through and doing all this. So if that's something that interests you, if you want to have a ton of fleet marks and Dilithium unlocked on all of your characters, then this would definitely be something I would recommend you take advantage of. And for number eight here, it's not necessarily a tip, but it's a response to a question that I have seen pop up and 
most recently I saw it pop up on Reddit uh, within the past day. And that is that you should not be going out and deleting your recruit characters, especially once you have the unlocks done on them. There is always a possibility that in future reruns of these recruitment events, Cryptic may add in a new task for you to do. And if you delete the recruit character and you want to get that reward, you'd have to go through and, you know, set up the character and all that again. So I would recommend that once you have a recruit character for any of the recruitment events that you just don't delete it. Even if you don't want to play it, just set it aside. Don't log into it, but don't delete it because every time you do something like that, you know how it goes. You know, you'll end up regretting it a couple of years from now in this game. And there's also a chance that Cryptic's servers may mess up and you might need to log into those characters to re-register that you have the certain unlocks done. So you don't want to get screwed over like that. So especially with the, the recent server issues we've had, you know, you just don't want to take that risk. And next up at number seven is a reminder to take advantage of your event and MUDs unlocks. So if you have a ton of event unlocks from playing over the years, you can open up your events window, go to the reclaim rewards tab, and you should have a ton of space gear and ground gear that you can go through and claim. You can see here, I'm on a level two character and the amount of gear that you can potentially go through and you know reclaim even at a low level like this is really quite crazy and if you've been around a long time, you're going to have access to tons of different sets, tons of different weapons. Um, and on the space side, it's going to be the same. So definitely remember to go through and take advantage of the, the event reclaim there. And a reminder, some of the event reclaims may show up under the Dilithium reclaim tab also. So that's another route to go to, to access to reclaim items. And if you have things that you have purchased in the mud store, you can also go through and claim those even at a very low level. So I have the Imperial Rift set from the mud store, and I can claim that on this level two character. And those, those items will scale up with you as you level. So um, definitely remember to take advantage of all of this stuff that you have either paid for or unlocked over the past couple of years. And at number six is a reminder to take advantage of bonus pools whenever you are going through and claiming any of the rewards, especially if you're claiming reputation marks or fleet marks, you definitely want to take advantage of a bonus pool. And if you're not sure what bonus pools are exactly, I'll leave a link to this video I have that goes over them in a bit of detail down in the description below. Um, but let me just show an example here of the, the impact of like a reputation mark bonus pool. So I'm going to claim a mark box from, from the, the recruit event here. Um, so this, this mark box is for 50 marks of my choice and it will eventually load it takes a while to claim all of these rewards, it seems. The, the ones I've been trying to, to claim throughout the night for, for doing this video, it seems like it's anywhere from half a minute to a minute for, for them to finally be claimed. It's a bit crazy, but that's, that's just still for you. Okay, there it goes. So you can see I've got this mark box in my inventory. It is going to give me 50 marks, but when I actually go through and claim it, so I'll go in and I'll claim 50 discovery marks. You see here that I actually got 60. That is because I have a reputation mark bonus pool active, which might be a bit hard to see with the, the scale of the UI here. So let me zoom in. So you can see up at the top left here on on my uh, window, on PC at least, um, I have this list of bonus pools and I've got quite a few active right now, but um, when I claimed that mark box, it subtracted 10 from the rep mark 
uh, bonus pool there, and it gave me those 10 as a bonus discovery marks. So definitely take advantage of those. Typically, they're not that expensive to get on the exchange. Um, right now, the 500 rep mark bonus pools are about six to 700K per. And there are also versions out there for fleet credits, uh, which is really handy for those of you that don't know that. Um, this, this will straight up just give you an extra 20% fleet credits whenever you contribute something to a fleet. So if you contribute 100K deal to a fleet and you have one of these active, you'll end up with 120K uh, fleet or, or fleet credits there. So um, definitely take a look at that video if you're not familiar with those. Bonus marks are extremely handy and you should also be using them on any of your alternate characters that are going through and claiming the account-wide rewards from this event because they too will be able to get bonus marks from those boxes. And at number five, for those of you looking to level up your recruit characters a little bit faster, there's a few different things you can do. The first is, while the first day reenactment event is going on, you can go through and play that once a day to grab one of these 150k experience bonus pools. That's pretty handy. You can also get into a built-out fleet that is in an armada. If you join an alpha fleet in a, an armada that is above level 700, then you can get a 20% experience point bonus passively while being in that fleet. If you join a beta fleet in a maxed out armada, that caps out at a 10% experience point bonus. And if you're in a gamma fleet, that is going to be 5%. And I'm just going to quickly mention that this Dilithium discount is not for you. It is just for fleet projects, for those of you that are excited looking at that. Now, the other thing that you can do if you want a power level is, of course, the, the research assignments, which I've covered in prior videos. That will require a bit of an EC or money investment, but that method still does work. Um, it just is going to be more expensive when there's not actively an XP event running to, to get more out of those research assignments. And at number four, for those of you trying to work on the R&D associated task here, make sure to take advantage of the uh, daily mission available over at the Fleet Research Lab. That will help you get through whatever crafting school you're trying to go through a little bit faster. So head over to your Fleet Research Lab and once you're in that map, you're going to want to head up to the northwest part of the map over here where you see the assignment officer. So head on over there. And you're going to talk to this assignment officer. And you're going to pick out whatever R&D school that you're, you're working on right now. So for me, let's say I just want to grab the cannons one here. I'm going to accept that, and then I'm going to open up my cannons uh, crafting window here, go to the cannon school, and up at the top, I'll see Fleet Research Lab Temporal Targeting Scanner. I'm going to run that. You see that it's giving me a substantial amount of XP there, and it takes 10 seconds. It does consume some resources, but not really that much. Give that 10 seconds, and that will give you a bit of XP. So this is basically a free daily that you get to run every single day for whatever crafting school that you're wanting to do. And if you have an R&D bonus pool active, you'll of course get 20% more XP out of it. And in addition to giving you that, that R&D XP, you're also going to get some Dilithium Ore, you're going to get some EC, so this is 1,200 Dilithium Ore, 15,000 DC, and then the crafting materials needed to go in and craft an upgrade, basically. So that's a really nice daily to do. You do have to go to your fleet research lab each day that you want to do it, but that can help you get through your R&D schools a little bit faster, and it can get you a little bit of Dilithium. And at number three, for those of you chasing the R&D reward here, which will let you level up any school on the recruit up to level 10, 
One of the things that I see people do, which is a bit questionable to me, is say they want to get beams up to level 10, you know, via this reward. What I see some people do is they'll take beams up to level 5, and then they'll claim this reward to get the level 10 unlock. So by doing that, they're only getting five levels out of this reward here. To me, it would be smarter to go and work on a different school than the, the primary one that you want. So let's say you took engineering up to level five. When you claim this reward, that's still going to let you set beams to, to level 10, even if you were working on a different school. So to me, it just, you know, it seems smarter to go and take an approach to it that's going to net you 10 levels rather than one that's only going to net you five. So just think about that when you're working on that task. And for tip number two, I want to go over a couple things that can help you find where exactly the Iconian tech or info are in a mission. So the first thing you should do when you're trying to go after the Iconian tech or the info is to go into the Tesseract device, look at the, the task on it, and see what mission you're needing to do next that has a piece for you to go out and get. Now, you don't have to do these in this specific order. You can go in and do you know, the very last one if you want first. It doesn't really matter. It's just that if you want to get all of the rewards, you do eventually need to go through and get each of these pieces unlocked here. So right now, I am in the Price of Neutrality mission. I've already scanned the, the device, so it's already done for me. Um, but if I was wanting to go in and find it, one of the big things I would want to be looking for is keeping an eye over on the mission tracker at the over at the right side of my screen here. What you want to look for is when you see this purple triangle pop up on your mission list. When that pops up, that means that you are actively on the map with that piece of Iconian tech or information. So as soon as you see that, you want to make sure you're paying attention and you want to make sure that you don't miss that. Because if you miss it, then you'll have to replay the, the mission to go back through and try to get it in the future. And um, if that is the case, if you've already completed the mission, but you missed picking this up, you don't actually have to complete the mission on the second time around. As soon as you do find the device on the map, uh, that's all you have to do. Just go over, scan it, and you can bail out of the mission. Now, if you're looking for where these things are, there is a very nice Reddit thread that I'm going to link in the description down below. This does not have the locations for every single map especially given that some of the missions have changed over the years. Some of the missions uh, that they have qualifying for this event did not exist when people wrote this eight years ago. And some of the missions that you may see people talking about on here also may have been removed in that time frame. But for at least a couple of these missions, you might be able to find the locations via this. Another thing you can do is just uh, use Google. There's people that have posted Plenty of videos over the years showing where to find X in a certain map. So definitely check that out. And another thing that you can do yourself is use the scan key. So on PC, by default, that is V. And when I do that, it seems to have bugged out because I've been standing here a while. So let me relog. Um, but when you hit the scan button, which again, by default is V, that will usually point you in the direction of the nearest anomaly. And you might have to move around on the map a little bit, but as you can see, when I hit V, it is pointing me over towards where this device is on this specific map. And then I can just go in, scan it, and I've got that one done. This might be just what we so hopefully that helps. And again, you know, make sure to use some of the community resources out there. Um, I don't know if there's a full up-to-date guide on all of the locations, given again that they have changed over the years, but you might be able to find a couple of them that are a little bit more difficult uh, just using the, the resources already out there.
And again, there's also probably some YouTube videos going over where a specific thing is on, you know, specific maps. And lastly, at number one, I want to show you how to go through and claim the account wide rewards from the Delta recruitment event and all of the other recruitment events on your non recruit characters. And a reminder to take advantage of bonus pools if you're looking to get any extra rep marks or fleet marks out of these rewards. So on ESD here, you're going to want to head towards Admiral Quinn's office. So that's a hard left after we leave the transporter area. And the NPC that you're going to want to talk to is Temporal Agent Philip Cray. He is directly outside Quinn's office. Greetings. How so can I assist just open up the, the store that he has there, and you can see all of the items that you can go through and claim. And it will also tell you what, what items you have not unlocked already. Um, so I see here that I need to go through and complete these three arcs on a Delta recruit character still. And I can look through the other recruitment events and see what I need to go through and do on them still. So um, this is a good way to keep track of what you have done and uh, what you need to go through and do to, to get extra rewards. And again, you know, bonus pools. Those are always very handy for situations like this where you get fleet marks and rep marks from some of these boxes. So this is the location for this NPC on the Fed side. Now I'm going to cut over and show you where it is on the KDF side and also where it is on the, the Romulan side. And over on the KDF side, it is inside the, the Great Hall. So as soon as you leave the transport area, it's going to be a right. And you're going to head into the, the Great Hall here. And they will be directly to the right once you enter this area. It's going to be this NPC right here, uh, directly across basically from where the, the security officer is. And this is Lieutenant uh, Juan. The, the temporal intelligence person here and it's the same thing as on the the fed side um you've got you know all the the rewards that you can claim um so i've got a admiralty card there i've got um this this pack that i can claim which would give me some fleet marks and lithium more and i also have this advancement reward which will give me some reputation marks so this character does have a rep mark bonus pool active right now. So I will quickly open this to, to demonstrate, you know, the, the extra marks that I get from this. Um, so I'm going to choose 500 competitive marks. And you see that I got 600 there because I had a bonus pool active for reputation marks. So one of the main you know, perks of having these recruitment characters and doing these unlocks is, you know, for, for any other alts that you make in the future, you know, that amount of marks that I just claimed from that one unlock on a Delta recruit, you know, that that's huge. That is 600 rep marks is basically getting this character up to, you know, up to like level, almost up to level five in that reputation. Like it's 25 or 30 marks short of being able to, to go up. To, uh, actually, it's got enough because I've already claimed another box already, apparently. But you get the point of having that unlock there means that I can progress through some reputations much easier on all of the other characters on my account. And over on the Romulan side, I, I have some sad news for all of you. They uh, They lied on the device here. Um, it lists that you can pick up rewards at ESD, Quonos, or New Romulus Command. And the first two are correct, but I don't know if they uh, they know this, but there's actually no NPC on New Romulus Command to, to pick this up on the ROM side. So if you're on a Romulan character, you can either go to your faction hub, ESD or Quonos, and just access the NPC there. And if you're also just wanting to go to a Romulan specific map you can also just go over to the romulan flotilla which is where this npc actually is that device and that tooltip there is lying when it says new romulus command it is actually the the flotilla here and specifically um the npc is straight up against the big windows on the the very far west side of the map here 
So I'm going to run over there and show you that real quick. And I uh, should clarify too that Delta recruits and all other recruit characters can use these NPCs. Um, so I used some of the other recruitment rewards on this character uh, to help level it up. Um, Zolan True. And you can also go through and reclaim some of the rewards um, if you if you ever lose them. Um, so like if you lose your temporal negotiator, you can go back to this NPC on if you're Romulan on the the flotilla here or on the faction hub. And for everyone else, you know they just go to their faction hub and they can reclaim it. Uh, but yeah, you can see um, I've got quite a few things that I can claim here. Um, and even with this, you know, this is a Delta Recruit character. My main is is a Delta Recruit cur currently, and there's still plenty of things that I can go through and claim. I'm surprised I never claimed that. Um, but yeah, but there's tons of different things that I can go through and claim. And hopefully, you know, this, this all has helped all of you. And hopefully you take advantage of some of the advice I've given, especially the, the, the bonus marks. The bonus marks, the bonus pools in general are, are a huge thing that people always forget about. So I highly recommend you, you spend some time to invest in some, some bonus pools to make sure that you're getting a little bit more out of these rewards. But that's going to be it for today. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down below and I will respond when I can. Thank you for tuning in. See you guys around.